arts wielding whip poetry battles. If I tell you you're foolish and stupid and dull, then I will spit in your face and I will bash in your skull. Sing songs. Being nice to strangers. Peace, friend. We have no need or wish to hurt you. Picking berries. Self-driving boats. Self-driving horses. Drone ravens. Dancing rats. Welcome to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where being a Viking suddenly feels like a day job. Spoiler warning. It is technically possible that I might say something that will spoil the game for you. Perhaps even more than the poorly implemented launch, the in-game digital shop, and the constant Uplay Online notifications flashing up on your screen, which destroy your immersion. But I doubt I can spoil this game worse than Ubisoft's bean counters have done already. Besides, I have not completed the main story questline, so that's some damage limitation right there. Thank me later. Completionists will probably get mad. Pragmatists will probably accept that at least I'm being honest. I found this game too predictably Ubisofted to complete. So blame them, not me. Trigger warning. I am not an expert on Viking history. Unless, of course, owning a Viking bearded axe counts as some kind of accredited academic Viking qualification. Which, frankly, is not a possibility we can rule out when it comes to Viking culture. Pretty much everything I know about Vikings I learned from watching an 8 minute YouTube video, spending a few hours on the internet, and watching Eric the Viking three times. So no doubt, nearly every Viking fact I mention will be either wrong or more significantly, even if it is correct, especially if it's correct, Viking fanatics will no doubt still nerd out on me anyway and write long, carefully crafted and impassioned, subtle corrections and adjustments to anything I've said. Just remember that if people are coherent and well-intentioned in the comments section, viewers might well read the comments and learn something useful. But if you just rant about me being a fuckhead, then you ain't telling anyone anything they don't know already. This one's mine. Come on, Arm. <laughs> you can do it. I am acutely aware that Vikings and their history are a much loved phenomenon in popular culture. They are revered and romanticised in video games, film, television, history, literature and gift shops, and they are a cornerstone of Nordic cultural identity and history. Throughout this review I will endeavour to be as respectful and sensitive as I can be when discussing Vikings and their legacy. Pfft. Even though they were a bunch of colonialists, thieves, pillagers, slave traders, and rapers. I obviously say all of this with absolute respect. I am merely raising the point that perhaps, just perhaps, Vikings have been very slightly over romanticised historically. Unless, of course, your idea of romantic is being raped over a table at the age of 14 whilst watching your dad get killed with an axe. It's not my place to judge. So yeah, I will do my best to be polite about the nice bearded fellas who raped everyone and stole their stuff. Wish me luck with that. They did make pretty boats though. Fair play to them mind, they had interesting beards, collected really vicious war axes and drank a lot. 
three things that would sit well on anyone's CV, so they were not entirely without charm. However, for the die-hard Viking fanatics out there, do your best not to get terribly upset and offended during this video. Because let's be fucking honest here, murdering lots of monks, priests and farmers, raping anything with a pulse, and pillaging the land of food and resources, then rounding up the survivors and enslaving them, are issues that could possibly be considered a little bit problematic by today's slightly more civilised standards. Unless of course you're used to this kind of thing because you live in some kind of shithole failed state. Like Chaz. Besides, if you are a real Viking fanatic, please at least maintain your dignity if I say something that hurts your fifis, because blubbing about it and then raging at me about it isn't a very Viking-like thing to do. Besides, there's a surprising amount of people in the United Kingdom who literally have some Nordic DNA because of all of the historic Viking rapers. I am not kidding. So yeah, if this video offends anyone from Nordic countries or Viking fan clubs, well at least my video isn't going to jump on a fucking boat to Denmark and start raping their ancestors. And before anybody says it, I know that Vikings were farmers and traders too. Farmers who had slave collars in their boats. And besides, of course they were traders. How else were they going to shift all the stolen goods? Assassin's Creed Valhalla, herein to be referred to just as Valhalla most of the time, is Ubisoft's latest sequel in the Assassin's Creed series. Valhalla transports the player back to the times of the Viking Rapers, I meant Raiders, where for the meagre price of paying lots and lots of real life cash, you get the privilege of experiencing what it would be like to have the life of a Viking transformed into a mundane clusterfuck of gig jobs and chores, all the while being harassed to buy microtransactions or check out someone's Uplay artwork on the fucking minimap. As many of you know, recently Ubisoft has been receiving a mountain of criticism for its lack of imagination, lack of new and inspired game IP, and for repeatedly cranking out rehashed, bloated, over-monetized, buggy sequels to the few surviving brands they have. Criticism that is unlikely to be counteracted by Ubisoft releasing their 20 fucking fourth Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, 24. There were so many on Wikipedia, I had to count them twice. But at least the fans were asking for Assassin's Creed with Vikings, so at least they were technically putting on a show of catering to their fans, I guess. Then again, fans were asking for zombies in the division, and that didn't work out so well. Assassin's Creed Valhalla inserts the player in 873 AD Norway, where they take on the role of playing a male or female Viking, because everyone knows they were female Viking warriors, because there's a shitload of them on TV shows and Viking movies, so it must be true. To be fair, apparently archaeologists have found remains of over 30 female Viking warriors in full armour in burial sites, so this is probably more an issue of fairness rather than wokeness. Although it's not really a matter of accuracy or science. I mean, apparently they also found the remains of over 150 fucking horses in Viking burial sites, so if we were going to be strictly scientifically accurate, according to archaeological evidence at least, you should really be able to play as male, a female, or a pony. I bet that omission alone will make the furries cry in bed at night, and the zoophiliacs cry whilst they sneak into the stables tonight. I chose to play the role of the male Vikinger, Eeyore of the Raven Drone Clan. My character is a rather striking looking Nordic beard sporting warrior modelled on a mix between Odin and Techno Viking, usually draped in a light coating of other people's guts. Our hero finds him slash she forced to relocate from his slash her native raping grounds, I mean raiding grounds, 
in Norway, because reasons. Mostly to do with typical Viking problems. Gentrification, unification of local markets, the beginnings of market globalisation and the fundamental lack of tall buildings to do parkour across. You set off in your Viking canoe to go and explore new prosperous markets abroad, which basically means you go to England to do some raperizing and pillagerizing and more parkour. Ultimately, you try and take over a huge part of the country, because as the narrative keeps rubbing in your face, the English are evil and you are much, much nicer, so it's only fair that you rule their country and raid all the towns and monasteries, pillage and burn the villages, because Vikings are nice. So that's fair, right? And if fairness isn't enough justification alone, then splitting everyone's wig seems to be a highly persuasive form of diplomacy, in this particular era at least. Have you done this sort of thing before? Me? Of course, I've been looting and pillaging up and down the coast. Looting and pillaging, eh? Yes. What about the raping? Shut up. Well, it's obvious you haven't raped anyone in your life. So what is Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Well, first and foremost, it's a really great way to overload and heat stress your gaming rig and generally melt any part of your computer that isn't sitting in a deep tray of liquid nitrogen. But that sadly seems to be the case with most Ubisoft new releases these days, because their design philosophy is, throw the game out of the door as fast as possible, and if it bursts into flames, we can always throw them a fire extinguisher next month. If Ubisoft made cars, the world would be permanently gridlocked, and the skyline would be choked with the thick acrid smoke of burning cars. But this aside, Valhalla is basically a third person action adventure game where you set off to establish your empire with a little help from your fellow Vikings and the allies you find along the way. You do quests, explore, collect shite, upgrade your gear, buy cosmetics from the in-game store and gradually carve out your little empire, expand the map and upgrade your base of operations. Fuck me, I should copy and paste these key points and use them in every Ubisoft game review. You know the drill, it's an open world, third person action adventure game with collectibles, a pulse location device, a drone where you do a lot of looting, solve puzzles and upgrade your gear whilst being constantly harassed by an in-game store. You know, business as usual for Ubisoft. You engage in the following activities. Gradually unlocking fast travel points on the map, rowing around in your wooden dinghy raft, riding around on a horse stolen from Red Dead Redemption 2, doing quests, upgrading your gear at a painfully slow rate, upgrading your skills from an incomprehensible mess of a spider web of nonsense, sequentially taking over sections of the map by completing missions. You parkour, you solve puzzles, you loot stuff, you spend an unhealthy time fucking around searching every pot, basket and mineral node to collect stuffs. You hunt down the evil members of that other order. You get really angry whilst trying to solve the annoying loot puzzles that turns a simple money pickup into a 10 minute frustrating borathon. You use your pulse skill to highlight objects in the environment. You have a drone, sorry, raven to scout around. You fish from the rivers, swim like a dolphin in 200 pounds of armour, you stealth around for about 8 seconds and then just say fuck it and hit the fucktards with your axe instead because it's quicker. You engage in poetry battles because someone got high on weed before a development meeting, you play dice to pad out the content, you sometimes storm castles, you frequently raid conveniently placed riverside encampments, you have little gig jobs you do on the side from a child merchant, or maybe he's one of those little fellas from Time Bandits. I honestly couldn't tell. You engage in drinking games, which is ironic because you could have bought a case of whiskey for the same price as this game and got drunk for real. Twice! It's basically Skyrim, colliding with Watch Dogs, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, The Division, Far Cry, with a very light sprinkling of Assassin's Creed as an afterthought. At this point, 
it's fairly uncontroversial to say it's like every game Ubisoft has released for as long as I can remember and probably for the rest of eternity too. It's basically a giant sandbox of time-consuming side activities to distract you from the fact that you're playing a rather laborious and unoriginal online digital shop. But it's got Vikings, so there is that. The arch plot of the game is the strategic expansion of your pint-sized Viking Empire, completing the story questline and doing Assassin's Creed-like stuff none of which I will see to completion because frankly I'm not spending 70 to 100 hours self-abusing myself with this game. I have several ways to self-abuse that are far more enjoyable and are usually over in a few minutes. Oh yeah, and you engage in some nonsense investigation for some weird creepy Assassin's Creed fellas whose missing fingers could possibly constitute evidence that vagina dentata was a real thing in the Middle Ages. Look, all myths grow from a seed of truth and people believe in vampires and werewolves, right? Why not vagina dentata? I'm not obsessed. Honestly. Basically, you are a very, very nice compassionate Viking that doesn't kill civilians or do any of that rapey stuff. Well, the game won't allow you to because Ubisoft probably hired a woke consultant. You're more of a liberator, not an invader. Pretty sure I've heard that one before. You set off with your band of merry singing men and lady vikings to go and carve yourself out an empire of your own, mercilessly carved off of someone else's empire in England. The English are really bad people in this game because they need to be dehumanised so you don't mind slaughtering them. Just like in Watch Dogs Legion, but at least you finally get to play as a Viking. So there is that. For those of you who don't know anything about Vikings at all, I should quickly explain a brief history of this Nordic people. Viking was more of a job description than a strictly defined set of rapists, I mean people. Basically, the seafaring Nordic boating folk during this period of history were graced by some unique economic opportunities. Their ability to travel well and fast by sea, their natural proclivity for combat and their keen desire for rape, I mean wealth, led them perhaps inevitably to the natural conclusion that they should travel around murdering everyone, raping their wives and stealing all of their shit. Vikings have been routinely romanticised throughout history for their fearless and violent pursuit of adventure and riches. Although I am going to go out on a limb here and postulate that there are perhaps more romantic first dates than having someone turn up, stick a fucking axe in your husband's head, rape you, steal everything you own and then burn your village to the ground. What can I say? Perhaps I'm just an old-fashioned romantic softy. But I would hesitantly claim that perhaps Vikings are frequently described in slightly more sympathetic and romantic tones than they strictly deserve. A good analogy would be that Vikings are a bit like a more ancient version of the Redcoats, only instead of just taxing your tea, they stole the tea. They stole everything else as well, murdered everybody, burned down your village and then fucked off down the coast to find someone else they could do this to. Rinse and fucking repeat. Vikings also were famed for their trust in the gods and employment of shamans to help guide them through the physical world. Shaman would traditionally use bones, runes and shamanistic rituals to seek out the guidance and spirits of the gods in order to advise the world of men. So yeah, they were basically bullshitters. Sometimes they were just the local town crazy. I am not being critical mind, as anyone who has lived in a small town knows, there's always one crazy fuck that hangs around the village green, swearing and talking to himself, having an angry animated argument with an imaginary invisible friend. Well if that guy was alive during Viking times, he would probably have carved himself out a fairly healthy career as a shaman. So the social structure in Viking times, to some degree at least, 
probably had better mental health support than modern Western societies. Functionality and fuckery. Well, I guess this is another part of the review that I could probably start copy and pasting from previous Ubisoft reviews. Seriously, you might as well just watch my Far Cry New Dawn review every time Ubisoft releases a new game. 90% of it will probably be the same for everything they publish. But I'll crack on regardless, just because people like to see me suffer. Valhalla has launch day microtransactions, which are the typical levels of shameful we are sadly becoming accustomed to. Increasingly these days when I buy video games from publishers like Ubisoft, Bethesda and EA, it frankly feels more like I'm paying 50 to 60 quid to get access to an always online digital shop. A shop that sells solutions to problems which I wouldn't even have if I hadn't bought the damn game in the first place. What's more, if you don't spend 100 quid and buy the deluxe edition from the start, you won't even get full access to the problems. The Anima store was shameful on many levels, and I'm sure that fans of early Assassin's Creed games are probably mortified to see the livery and branding of the franchise splashed all over a digital store that primarily sells you shit. Albeit shit that should be accessible in-game for free. Ubisoft exercised its faux generosity by giving you 300 free Helix coins, and that number is not picked out at random. It's precisely just slightly too little to buy a fucking single useful thing from the store. It's just an incentive to encourage you to stick your hand in your pocket and shell out real cash for more of Ubisoft's functionally abusive cyber currency. All I could find for 300 Ubisoft shillings was a shit tree, a shit skin for my Norwegian dinghy, or a shit sparrow. I found the usual array of Ubisoft launch day problems, like a broken animal looting mechanism which saw my animal carcass slide down the side of a hill, and it took me a while to realise I had to loot the point of impact from the arrow and not the actual carcass. Then there was the fucky map system. For reasons I could neither fathom nor fix, when I zoomed in or out on the map it would move off to another position, so I was constantly having to reposition my view just because I changed magnification slightly. If Ubisoft was trying to introduce little ways to constantly annoy the player, this would work. Not that they really needed to introduce more ways to annoy the player. There were relentless, life-changing loading screens. I'm talking Watch Dogs Legion's levels of Dear fucking Lord, I should have brought a book to read levels of tiresome. These days my best advice to anyone playing a lot of Ubisoft games is to perhaps consider getting a second job where you can work from home. That way you could probably rack up 10 to 15 hours of paid work with just what you would have done during the loading screens. Plus, you can use that extra cash to buy all the paywalled content from the in-game store. So yeah, Ubisoft's loading screens are getting so out of control now if someone tells you the main quest took 80 hours, I would deduct 10 to 20 hours of that to account for loading screens. There was a bit of interaction fuckery going on too. If you were not precisely in the right spot, often the game would not let you interact, so you had to jiggle around a lot to get in the right place. Some of the in-game mechanics were utter nonsense. Titanium is one of the in-game currencies you use for blacksmithing. This game is set in 873. Titanium was discovered in 1791, 900 years later. So this naturally begs the question, were the developers smoking fucking crack when they dreamt this shit up? That's like making a game about Henry I of England and giving him a fucking Bitcoin wallet. Honestly, a 918 year anachronism. I get that sometimes people might get cars, fashion, weapons or TV sets wrong in films, TV or video games, but not by nearly a thousand years. Perhaps I can find a spaceship and some microwave pizza somewhere in the game. Credit where credit is due though, the ship functionality was solid quality of life mechanics. 
Obviously, you spend a lot of time driving around in your Viking dinghy boat thingy with your merry band of politically correct charitable warrior brethren. Giving this boat a sat-nav and self-drive capabilities stopped it getting boring. You could just turn on cruise control and let the boat sail itself to the next pillaging location whilst you enjoyed the view. And you could do something more constructive with your time as well whilst it did it. You know, like reinstall Skyrim. There were immersion breaking digital clock timers. Yeah, that was horrible. Little digital clocks ticking down on your time limited offers in ye oldy worldy trading hut. This combined with the unavoidable Uplay achievement pop ups and compulsory forced online forced social experience nonsense stuck on my map, reminding me of IRL stuff I play games to escape from, really made this an immersion crushing experience. The fishing controls also required button mashing. I personally loved the fishing minigame. I do, however, despise any PC-based game that demands button mashing. It's 2020 and whilst I pride myself on the quality of my keyboard, I would rather not smash it into my desk for the sake of a few digital fish. I mean, are these guys sponsored by Razer? If anyone at Ubisoft Montreal is watching this, then please find out who designed the fishing key smashing mechanics. Then encourage everyone in the office to slap their keyboard 10 times a day just to see how they like it when they need to buy a new keyboard every month. There was also the controversy concerning the ableist knee bending going on. It turns out one person complained about the wording in an in-game description. Apparently, Ubisoft described a character who was horribly burned as a child as having a disfigured face for the unjustifiable reasons that she was horribly burned as a child and had a disfigured face. Apparently, that's a very naughty thing to say, and based on the single Twitter complaint that this was being ableist, even though it could have just as easily been a 4chan troll, Ubisoft leapt to action and are patching it out of the game. This is frankly a pathetic grovelling attempt at virtue signalling. It's pathetic that Ubisoft is apologising for nothing. And it's pathetic because it's tokenism. Given all the current workplace abuse complaints levelled at the company, their own ongoing internal audit and investigation slash cover up, this is just smoke and mirrors virtue signalling. Nothing more needs to be said. I also have to mention the fuckery going on in the Ubisoft official forums. Ubisoft seems to have started censoring and banning people for repeatedly complaining about poor game performance. Yes, Ubisoft repeatedly releases games and DLC content with poor performance. But if you complain about it once for every game, now you are an asshole. A mate of mine, Mr. Snowball, got a temporary ban just for complaining that Valhalla wasn't optimised at launch and ran like shit. Both statements were factually true, and he said it a lot more politely than me. Then later, he was additionally banned for life. For making too many comments. I guess the censors prefer to have less comments to check. Easy solution. Ban people altogether. Ubisoft censors the forum, censors the subreddit and censors its own staff when they complain about workplace abuses. But the good news is, they also now censor factually correct statements in their video games if they're accused of being ableist. <laughs> the combat. The combat in this game is kind of weird and getting a very mixed reception. It's basically button spam where you always have to be ready to dodge or block. In fact, the best way I can describe the group combat is that it's like one of those sword and sorcery movies where the hero might have had his fight choreography planned, but all the extras around them and in the background are just clanging their swords against each other, waiting for the next meal break and looking at their watches. Things tend to become more animated and realistic near you when you engage. But if you step back, the NPCs seem to just go through the motions like it's a movie set and their job is to look like they're fighting but not actually get hit or die. 
until the director shouts cut and they can all fuck off to the canteen bus for as much free nosh as they can fill their boots with. Overall, the combat was kind of visually entertaining but left me cold. Generally, I just hit things with an axe, leveled up, added plus two damage to my axe and went straight back to hitting people with my axe. I would say that 99% of the combat experience was just pressing mouse button one and spamming hit the bad man with the axe. You do get some nice killing blow animations that they nicked from Skyrim and I'm sure some people will enjoy it, but honestly I just spec'd plus two one-handed axe damage whenever I could and tried to hit people from behind. Job done. It wasn't particularly bad and it actually looked visually quite pleasant. I think it just felt like an afterthought maybe, catering more to the players who wanted the story and exploration where combat wasn't too taxing or overcomplicated. It was fine, fine punctuated by the occasional great head stomping animation and sometimes even by an NPC randomly climbing on a roof or some other weirdness. You do get to use a bow which is nice and do stealth stuff which I tried to incorporate just for lols but generally for the combat you will only need one button most of the time. One button, 10 brain cells, a spank mag, two buttons at a push if you plan to aim your bow before firing it. But the game does have vikings, so there is that. So what's my overall take on Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Frankly, any review of this game is largely redundant because it's Ubisoft making an Assassin's Creed sequel using Vikings. All the information you need is in the product description on the back of the box, assuming you can still buy physical copies these days. Ubisoft plus Assassin's Creed plus Vikings. Let's figure this out together, class. It's a bloated third person open world time sink of a game with tons of doing jobs and busy work. It runs like shit at launch, takes up far too much space on your hard disk and came with day one microtransactions. The only real justification for reviewing it at all is to establish just how many game mechanics are ripped out of other Ubisoft games and similar titles and see just how badly it runs at launch. And FY fucking I, all the mechanics are ripped off and it ran very very badly at launch indeed. There is also the issue of the shag factor in this game. For a game where you constantly have to explore, loot and collect stuff, they sure have made this whole process a huge shag. I'm not sure why they would want to make these three activities so central to the game progression and then seemingly place every single obstacle in your way of achieving them. There is a paucity of fast travel points. The movement is clunky, sticky and awkward and the entire looting process is an immensely annoying ball ache. I frequently found myself in villages during raids and attacks, constantly pulsing, searching and looking at my map and cycling through these activities trying to work out what the fuck was highlighted on my compass and what wasn't and sometimes ended up just saying fuck it and leaving without all the loot. Everything is a shag in this game. The activities in this game, which I love doing in other games, are somehow frustrating and turned into a chore. The game somehow turns pillaging and looting into a chore. Literally everything in this game is best described as a bit of a shag. Everywhere is difficult to get to, everything you need to collect is difficult to find, the boat is slow, the fast travel points are either in the worst place or nowhere near where you need them, even quickly going to the shop is somehow turned into a laborious process. The game simply doesn't streamline its core activities well. And practically everything, and I mean everything you fucking do, usually triggers a load screen or a hang up whilst the game transitions you to the next process or location. This is like trying to run through knee deep mud. My best advice to anyone who picks up this game is work out how to skip cutscenes cut dialogue short and quickly move through the vendor conversations as quickly as possible. And that is a fairly damning statement. When the best advice is learn how to quickly skip through lots of the game's content. Fuck. 
I frankly found it pathetic when I discovered that I would be punished for killing innocent civilians. Yeah, really let that sink in. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a Viking sim where you are effectively banned from raping and killing. You can steal and defend yourself against the guards. I'm frankly surprised the game doesn't make us phone up the monastery the day before and book a fucking appointment. It's that level of over-civilised. Uh, excuse me, any chance I could book in a raid for tomorrow afternoon please? That way I can pop over and pillage your church and still be finished in time for the school run. So really it's a polite stealing simulator. A stealing and sailing simulator where you sing merry songs in your boat, enter local poetry competitions and you never hurt the peasants. This is Vikings the musical. If this shit was even vaguely realistic, my brother would be raping a nun over the altar whilst I was cutting the priest's hands off whilst chewing on their roast chicken dinner I found on the fire. I'm not saying I want to rape and murder in video games. What I'm saying is making a pacifist viking simulator is revisionist dishonest bullshit. You don't have to let the player do it. In fact I strongly advise against that. But you can easily represent the historical reality accurately and honestly. Have a cutscene at the end showing a pile of dismembered priests and villagers. Show images of beaten abuse victims pulling their clothes over them and fleeing the town. There are ways to handle these issues dramatically and realistically without just pretending that that's not what happened. If you're going to make a video game that deals with this sort of historical issue, don't whitewash the violence and romanticise the daring do. Don't manipulate the storyline to make the raiders the good guys. I mean, they're just there stealing people's stuff. Keep it real or get the fuck out of the cab. It's a viking simulator where the raiders are really, really nice. This game is to vikings what springtime for Hitler is to the Nazis. It's quite laughable. Would you really make a serial killer game where you can't kill anyone? Call of Duty where you can't shoot anyone? Or a World War II fighter pilot game where you don't have weapons on the aircraft? In Assassin's Creed Valhalla you can play as either a male or a female because that's apparently the law these days. Although it turns out that whatever you choose actually you are really a girl on the inside. Assassin's Creed players will know what I mean by that. Well, maybe not specifically about feeling like a girl on the inside, but the plot part of the statement. So yeah, you get to play as a manly viking if you choose, but once someone turns off the animus, you become a lady anyway, with a female sidekick and some bespeckled boffin who gets sent to do the shopping runs at the local store because he's a new male. Welcome to Hipster World, where all women are empowered and men do the shopping. That is apparently the modern player power fantasy that Ubisoft thought we were all looking for. The game is obviously trying to wrestle with two conflicting realities. On one hand, Vikings were basically the very genesis of European colonialist oppressors. They were rapers and they thieved their way around Europe and traded in stolen goods and even more stolen slaves. On the other hand, Ubisoft knows it's 2020, so they have to try and reframe everything to position the Viking protagonists as a group of noble, wronged, disenfranchised, wholesome folk who are just trying to find a little patch of land somewhere in the world that they can call their own. A little patch of land which I will presume they want to rape and pillage. I guess this was quite a problematic issue for Ubisoft. You can't really make a Viking open world adventure game and be authentic, otherwise people would be winning Xbox trophies and free Ubisoft credits for capping achievements like rape a hundred villagers, murder twenty English priests or own fifty slaves. Imagine that sort of steam achievement popping up in the corner of your screen. Who's the slave daddy? Have sex with 100 owned slaves. 
I'm sure that those kind of screenshots surfacing on Twitter would make some of the recent social media shitstorms in a teacup seem relatively tame by comparison. Ultimately, Ubisoft negotiated the problem of remaining woke and making a Viking sim by completely ring-fencing lots of historical crimes and abuses and punishing the player for breaking the gentlemanly rules of conduct. And by establishing the victimhood of the Viking band in order to justify their actions in the first place. Yeah, that is what video games have devolved into, using bullshit like victimhood and victimhood status to justify Vikings pillaging, killing and stealing. I guess that's art imitating life. It's worth considering that Vikings were pretty much the first incarnation of corporate colonialist forces. They were like first gen East India Company guys. They travelled around the world, thieving and brutalising whoever they could, stole their stuff or just took over and set up forced trading operations, just like the East India Company. They were mercantile, slave trading mercenaries that traded when they could and stole when it suited them. Then again, I'm not going to be too broken up about them raiding English churches and monasteries because the reason they were full of gold and riches was because all the peasants had to work in the mud and give a huge chunk of everything they had to the church because reasons. And that's completely aside from all the taxes they paid to their feudal overlords. The perk system was <laughs> quite funny really. It was visually trying to ape the Star Constellation vibe of Skyrim, but replaced the compartmentalised skill based structure with a completely random spiderweb of perks that only really become visible as you progressed. Unless of course you just watch a YouTube guide. I prefer to keep it real, and by real I mean I just randomly specced into random shit because I didn't care. Although I would qualify that if I saw any skill point investment that provided quality of life, plus two axe damage, or the opportunity to be lazier than I already am, I would usually pick that next. And did I mention that they were trying to be a lot like Skyrim in this game? Then there is the ridiculous situation with doors. Because everyone bitched and moaned about not doing enough parkour and roof exploration in a previous Arse Creed game in Valhalla, it appears that every single door in every single village is bolted from the inside for no other reason than to give you an opportunity for some vertical climbing to get down into the building from above. This raises two significant questions. Considering it's the year 800 and whatever, why does even the most poor village have multi-storey buildings? And secondly, why can't we just break down the door? I mean, we are Vikings, right? We have axes. Axes are the precise tools we give firemen to break down doors. And I'm talking modern, grown-up, proper security doors. I'm sure axes could handle birch, wood and oak, starch, glue, shitty medieval doors held together by wooden pegs. It's just nonsense, like so much of this game sadly. So much of this game is silly silly nonsense. Like when you are low on health in a battle and you need to run around picking berries to get your health bar up. Like when you can't find berries but find huge piles of food and vegetables but you ain't allowed to eat those because it's just a visual environmental model. Like how you can stop fighting in a battle and watch everyone play fight for five minutes and virtually nothing happens. The list is endless. But you know, it all looks pretty, so if you love Vikings, you're half pissed and you're stuck in your house, you might not care. You will see past all of the ridiculousness because, you know, at least it's got Vikings. There was also the increasingly troubling issue of the infuriating immersion breaking bullshit in this game. Good luck trying to get mentally lost in an ancient Viking world when you're being bombarded with this level of horseshite constantly. Annotations on the maps showing you where your friends took in-game photos? Really? The constant reminder of the in-game shop, pop-ups telling you about the 300 dildo credits that Ubisoft just awarded you for free 
so you can go and check out the pay to win content. I hate all this shit because you can't opt out of most of it and sometimes when you do opt out, you play ignores your choices anyway and just carries on. I'm sorry but when I'm trying to feel like a Norse raider, I don't want to look at my map and see messages telling me that my mate Stinkfinger89 just took a photo a mile from my position. I mean, what the actual fuck is going on with this forced shared online experience fuckery? It's a disgrace to have this kind of nonsense pushed up into your grill at every opportunity, especially in a historical game like this. They didn't even have digital cameras and social media in this time period, so why are they posting this crap all over ye oldy worldy mini mappy? The pacing of the game is appalling, particularly early game when you just want to run around and split wigs with your plus two axe. It felt like the game was getting in the way of itself. Literally it felt like the game was constantly blocking the player from experiencing the actual game. It would send you off to speak to someone, then inflict a 10 minute cutscene on you, rinse and repeat, then you'd finally get to do something Viking-y for 2 minutes and then you'd have to report back for another 20 minute saga of a debrief. I didn't time it but it certainly felt like the first 5 hours of gameplay was 95% watching some tart blabber on about the Norse god Horus or Boris or Horos or whatever. Too much talky, not enough plus two axie. I would note that this is the second Ubisoft game released in a month that shits on the English. This is not accidental. Here is what video game industry inside a gatekeeper website, Reset Era thinks of the English. It would certainly appear that amongst certain groups in the progressive video game world, discrimination directed at the English is now perfectly fine on a forum that is legendary for instantly life banning anyone who expresses so much as casual disregard of discrimination. But slagging off the English, well that's just fucking fine apparently. In Watch Dogs, Ubisoft portrayed the English as a bunch of miserable fascist racist assholes. Now a few weeks later, the English are the bad guys in a Viking game. Yeah, think about that. A bunch of marauding, raper, thieving shitlord scum turn up in a video game and it's the English who are painted as the big meanies by comparison. Me smells an agenda here. Hmm, Ubisoft releases two games in a month shitting on the English. Hmm. I have my own pet theory that after Brexit the English will be the new Russians. What do I mean by that? Well it's a fast growing trope that when video game publishers need villains, they pick on the Russians. Upper Echelon made a video discussing why Russians have become the shake and bake cookie cutter villains in video games and it certainly seems like it's a direct result of video game market share. That's why video game companies desperately try not to insult huge sections of the market like America or China. But Russia is a big cartoon villain which represents a very small slice of global video game sales. And because of Brexit, it appears we are being pushed on the same special bus yet again. You see, it's an old trope in movies and TV, you know, making the English guys the villains, but it's catching on now in video games and shithole forums like Reset Era. Yeah, Reset Era, that loving and caring safe space where you will get instantly banned for hinting you're not concerned enough about certain political issues. Not even kidding. But at the same time, their members spam hate comments about Trump and spam messages about wanting him to fucking die horribly. Oh yeah, and throw down posts about ethnically cleansing England. So yeah, when I describe Reset Era as a shithole, I do it purposefully, because you will get an immediate life ban if you hurt someone's fifis about gender and identity politics, but at the same time you can literally call for ethnic cleansing or death on your enemies. It's just as bad as any neo-Nazi site really. They have the same tactics, the same hate and bile, the only difference is who they seek to hate and why. Same shit, different choice of enemy and ally. 
they bleat on about tolerance and ending prejudice, unless someone is considered the enemy, in which case you can openly call for their death. And that's just fine. If there is one thing I've learned about extremist political ideologies, it's this. They all think they're defending us against something. They all think the rules don't apply to their enemies. They all think harm coming to their enemies is justified. Because they're the enemies. So yeah, you heard it here first, guys. There will be a lot of England bashing over the coming years in video games because internet denizens of wokeness have decided that we are a nation of racist scum that needs to be cleansed from the planet. Every last one of us. Just make sure you get your pronouns correct whilst you talk about murdering us all on Reset Era, because getting your pronouns wrong, well that right there, that's a horrible thing to do. Ethnic cleansing apparently, not so much. I'm sure there's lots of nice people on Reset Era. In fact, I know there are because one of them got banned for life for recommending my videos. Nice people are there too. The issue is that if you stray one inch away from their strict political agenda, you will get immediately censored at best, most probably just banned for life. Imagine the absolute worst madmin authoritarian mind controlled forum imaginable. Now times that by 100 and put cream puffs in charge. It is literally a forum where you can spam messages promoting the death of the President of the United States. But if you call someone guys, you can get banned for life for hate speech. My point is that one of the central meeting points of the gatekeepers of the video game industry collect on a forum where they think it's acceptable to call for the deaths of their enemies. However much you dislike your political opponents, calling for their deaths? That's unacceptable. But to draw a line under this, as always, if you cross paths with people like this on the internet, don't be abusive towards them. Honestly, you ain't going to change anyone's mind by telling them they're a fucking idiot, even if they are. As is often the case, responding politely with dignity and civility will at least show them that not everyone outside their little echo chamber is a horrible abuser. Besides, I went down the rabbit hole for you, so you don't have to. And trust me, I didn't find anyone who was going to have their minds changed via reasonable debate, and being rude to them just reinforces their prejudices. I guess in Valhalla they kind of Mel Gibsoned the English. This game blatantly took a leaf, no pun intended, out of the Mel Gibson playbook. And let's remember that Gibson did the same with the American Civil War. Strangely, just like Ubisoft did with a previous Assassin's Creed game. Just a cautionary note, I personally wouldn't advocate following the tactics of a movie star who tried to get out of a drink driving charge by blaming a Jewish conspiracy. Just saying. His strategy goes something like this. Make a movie about a historical event. Back the underdog, make up a bunch of fictional crimes, war crimes, historical atrocities that never happened, because you know, Nobody's going to Google that shit in the cinema to see if you made it up. Then everyone is angry about the stuff the English did. Now the film can brutally kill them off. If this sounds like propaganda, that's because it is propaganda. That's what Ubisoft did here. The Vikings are portrayed as saviours, emancipating the English from the bloody tyrannical rule of uh, themselves. Sounds like very pretty words to describe an invasion. I think Ubisoft to some degree is going through a kind of blockbuster movie studio crisis. Ubisoft has become afraid of risk, penny pinching on development, abusive to its customers and greedy. The end result is that their games are becoming play safe clones of previous titles designed by committee with no bold or risky decisions made. Ubisoft games are like a Transformers sequel or an Alien sequel. They're trading on the brand's footprint, but ultimately killing it a little every time. Let's compare game mechanics from The Division, Watch Dogs, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Pulse, drone, echoes, legendary animal hunting. Plus, they nicked a bucket load of ideas from games like Red Dead Redemption 2. Ubisoft's games are becoming so generic 
and converging on the same small set of game mechanics to such a degree, I reckon that within three years we will have Tom Clancy's Assassin's Creed Division. I'm not even sure if I'm joking. Actually, I'm not joking. But let's say five years just to be safe. At the end of the day, we can't escape the fact that we're dealing with a bunch of sadistic, thieving, greedy rapers. So I guess it was inevitable that eventually they would get around to making a game about Vikings. Ultimately, if you're going to make a video game about a bunch of conquering bandit raiders who basically like to fuck and fight and steal and plunder, who liked trade, travel and slavery, well, you need to keep that shit authentic. Valhalla fundamentally does not. It's a fucking Viking safe space. It's like a pub that doesn't serve alcohol or a music festival where they ban dancing. It's fundamentally at odds with itself. Assassin's Creed Valhalla portrays Vikings less accurately than the Wizard of Oz portrays tornadoes. Save yourself a few quid and go and watch 13th Warrior instead and spend the rest of the money you saved on an axe from Wolfland Armory. It's basically an apologist Viking sim where they constantly try and justify why they are doing what they are doing and frame them as the victims in all of this. It's yet another generic Ubisoft game and ticks all the boxes. It's an always online, third-person, open-world time sink. It's got day one microtransactions. It's got a location, pulse skill, a drone. Crow. As I said in my Watch Dogs Legion review, they might change the location, the historical setting, the character skins and weapons, but it is, let's face it, the same fucking game. Valhalla is a Viking-themed version of the same blueprint, with the same set of game mechanics cherry-picked from the Ubisoft paint-by-numbers palette. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is basically Ghost Recon Breakpoint with an axe. You got a drone raven, your vehicles, and very slightly better enemy AI, and I think it shares some of the same basic qualities, in that it does have some kind of appeal, it's probably a game you might dip into from time to time if you're bored and just want to drift around and enjoy the scenery. Valhalla is not unpleasant, and if I'd been in prison for the last 10 years and this was the first game I'd played, I'd probably look forward to sinking some time into this time-consuming black hole of life. But I've played too many games just like this one, and I'm frankly starting to find the prospect of the inevitable vast time commitment of pointless busy work very, very tiresome indeed. And maybe that's the point, really. Yet again, I've fired up another Ubisoft game and very quickly realised that I have either consigned myself to hundreds of hours of pointless doing stuff, or the decision that I will abandon the game unfinished. And I could say right now, I ain't going to be finishing this game. Objectively, Valhalla is neither an original nor a particularly inspired game, but I would note the following. If you're a huge fan of Vikings, you want to play any game with Viking stuff in it, you have endless time to kill, you like sitting there watching long, drawn-out cutscenes, you are very, very patient and don't get bored easily, possibly you're slightly hypoxic or sedated, then maybe Valhalla is the perfect game for you. So, on a positive note, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is literally the perfect game for a Viking fanatic who is in prison for attacking someone with an axe, has nothing to do, and is permanently sedated. So if you fit that profile, then this is the perfect video game for you. I sadly think that AAA Video Games has followed the precise same route and evolution that was followed by blockbuster mainstream movies, and is suffering from all the same problems. Games are now built by corporate committee, the auteur is largely dead in mainstream games, they're designed to please the most people on average, they're not designed to be brilliant with limited appeal, Creativity is always trumped by management procedures. Risk taking is crushed. On top of this, movies are a mainstream entertainment product, but AAA games are a different, more refined and frankly more intelligent market than mainstream blockbuster movies. 
I'm sure that I will have offended somebody by saying that, but it's true. Kingdom Come Deliverance is noteworthy as a perfect example of how a truly amazing original game could only come about because a person with vision, surrounded by brilliant, dedicated, creative people, had complete creative control. The fact that Daniel Vavra is also a big scary guy with a beard who likes assault rifles and whiskey probably factored into this too. But that's my own personal observation. You see, you can take the best 100 devs in the world and stick them in Ubisoft Malmo, and they will just churn out a Ubisoft game like all the other Ubisoft games, because that's how their processes work. I'm not saying that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is completely devoid of charm or appeal. The open world is beautiful and enormous, because that's something Ubisoft specialises at doing well. It's visually cinematic and looks very pretty indeed, even if it really fails to nail the atmosphere and feels like a very nice looking, slightly detached, inauthentic simulator. What it does really well is create a huge activity playpen of Viking themed time sink activities, like fishing, fighting and sailing. If you're a fan of all things Viking and Viking related fantasy, then this is basically a giant Viking themed digital Disney world for you to explore at your leisure, and I'm sure you'll love it. And your mum will probably approve that all the nastier Viking bits have been removed. But then again, if you are that much of a fan of Vikings, you'll probably be just as happy playing a Viking themed version of Tetris. Just as this game is just a Viking themed version of other Ubisoft games, and frankly, other open world games. In fact, I recently described Valhalla to someone as being basically Viking themed shit Skyrim. But to reiterate a point, if you were stranded on a spaceship, loved anything to do with Vikings, had nothing to read, this would be the perfect game for you. I definitely think that Valhalla is yet more concrete evidence of Ubisoft's problematic relationship with bloating, because they're trying to create games that primarily just keep you online for the maximum amount of time to maximise your exposure to their in-game digital goods and products. They're just metaphorically now putting sawdust in the bread and padding out their games with any content, however shit, just to drag out the experience for as long as they can, just to give them more opportunities to expose you to microtransactions. They have forgotten how to make a tight, compelling video game experience. More isn't automatically better. One perfectly cooked, lean hot dog inside a lovely fresh hot dog roll is wonderful. It's amazing how just the simplest foods prepared fresh can be a delight. Just a plain hot dog, a fresh bun and a tall glass of water. Sure, the hot dog is probably made out of pork anus, chicken's feet and sodium diacetate and maybe literal dog, but you get my point. Simple pleasures, simple enjoyment. Maybe even two, or a small plate of them is a wonderful taste experience. But fucking 80 of them, which you are forced to eat through as fast as possible, however, is a thoroughly horrible experience. And that is Ubisoft's problem. They can't make a good meal anymore. Every game has to be a fucking speed eating competition. Where frankly, quitting after six hot dogs is probably the wisest thing that you can do for the best experience. Because even if you win the competition, it ain't going to feel good by the time you've finished. And this is precisely why I could not bring myself to complete Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But, you know, it's got Vikings, so there is that. But for now. Good luck, and happy hunting.